about the new order, it changed again. It's gonna change every day, I think. Next up here, if we can have Chris come on up, Landon, Cody, John Hayes, David Hoax, Allison, Daniel Robinson, Nathan, Ingrio, and Jen. Okay, these are the top 10 right now in points. You got Chris and Nick who flipped yesterday and now they're flipping again. It's just the way it is. It's not many points difference either. Nick and Chris are working together, COXO, XOCO, but now it's Chris again as the mission commander. Congratulations to the top 10. It's, uh, nice job. Certainly the top 10 people give their heart and soul to doing what they were asked of. The way it's shaking out in my impression is that no matter where your heart is, the people that have some more experience with it appear to be performing a little bit better because you can't just say, I'm gonna give it everything I have if, if you haven't uh, felt what it feels like to have a little bit of failure and a little bit of suffering. So it seems to me like the people that are performing the best uh, suffer well. Finally, people are starting to understand this is about a team, and it's about the mission. I've been waiting all week for people to get this, and I've been keeping my mouth shut, and finally I'm starting to see it come to, come to fruition, come to life, and it's just awesome. The Monster Mash is a time-honored SEAL tradition. One of the units in the team creates a mixed bag of evolutions, like PT, open water swimming, small boats, shooting, you name it. No two Monster Mashes are alike. Except for one thing. Each one of them is difficult. Very difficult. What we're gonna do for the Monster Mash, the sprint, come back, we've got 100 push-ups. You're gonna do 100. Take as many sets as you want. As long as you get to that 100. When you get back to the 100, you come in from the shade, come back, keep the cone on your left, turn around, lunges. Knees touch the ground, okay? Re forward lunges are the first ones. It's gotta just be 100. You're gonna go down the cone, back up, past this cone, 100 reverse lunges. Finishing it up with 100 squats. Elbows touching the knees. Three, two, one, go! Ed's gonna be walking around, Chris is walking around. Good push-ups, as you wish. Cheat your body, do good Good ones. form though, all the way down. Count them out, come on. Count them out loud, count them out loud. It's looking good, I mean, they're they're sucking it up, they're getting through it. Yeah, it's, it's obviously not an easy series of exercises, especially with the sprint. Uh, definitely works those bigger, 
muscle groups, your quads and your glutes. And uh, those are the ones that are going to tax you aerobically as well. So uh, some people's forms were a little questionable at times, but that happens sometimes with fatigue. That also happens when you're trying to cut some corners possibly. So I think we've made a note of some of those situations and there will be some penalties given out. Lunges, lunges, count them out loud. Knees touch the ground for the lunges. Man, this is shit. Knees touching the ground for the lunges. Nice job, Nick. Good job, go all the way down, all the way down. No, no half push-ups. Sound off, sound off. Everybody's count. Count them out loud. Hundred lunges, hundred lunges. Either knee. Sound off, Nick. Let us know where you're at. Make sure we can hear you counting them out. Good job, man. Finish strong. So, a little surprising because you don't really realize how much blood goes to your quads when you're doing the lunges. It's really hard. In fact, you feel like really wobbly and shaky and you wonder if you're going to go down. I was more focused on form rather than making up for time because if you do them improper, you have to start all over. Jan. Good job, Chris. Good Getting various uh, methods of, <laughs> of working it out. Yeah, everybody's body's a little different. Everybody's form's a little bit different. I have sun poisoning. Everything seems so much harder. But we're gonna do it. My hamstring popped. So I'm gonna just kind of take it easy. Way stop. Really tired. Are you done? Yeah. I was not ready for that at all. I did pretty good overall, I think. Definitely shows me where I need to work on personally to be on the same level as the rest of the competitors. But uh, I'm gonna go help my teammates cheer them on. I made it to the top ten, and it was a timed event, so I put everything on the table. I didn't give a shit if I threw it, if I just, I wanted to stay there, and then it just killed my leg. Five, Reversals we hadn't done yet, they just smoked my leg. I mean, after everything we've done this week, my legs are just dead. I wanted to stay in the top ten. I put it all out there, everything I had. You know, that is the most impressive thing I've seen today besides everybody's performance and putting it out. When they come back after this grueling routine we call a monster mash and then help a teammate by going through it again, that's incredible. That's teamwork. They're wearing themselves out for the next evolution where they could be timed as an individual, but now their main concern is helping the teammates out. To me, that's the most impressive thing I'm seeing today. I thought I was working out, but I was completely wrong. I've been wrong for years. I have a whole Four, respect for five, our armed forces. Six, 12, 13, 14, 100! 100. All right, look up your times. All right. Nice job. Good job. Go check in. Check in. Everyone's freaking awesome. It was a great day. It was a good day. Everyone built each other up. Everyone encouraged each other. It's been good. It's been motivating. I know this is sick, and if anyone hears me, they're gonna hate me, but I love this. I know you do. There's something wrong with me. All right, I don't know. You guys just did a monster mash. I haven't seen a monster mash in a long time, but I've never, ever remember anybody putting out as hard as you all just did just now. It was something as teammates that a lot of you stepped up to help your fellow competitors. 
finish and get their reps done and help them count. And I think that's, that's the kind of teamwork that we all need, and that's important. Especially if we're going to go out on a mission, we've got to have each other's backs, right? I mean, that's how it works. So yep. great job helping each other out, making sure each and every one of you got through and got it done. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna walk through and just show you a couple doors. When you walk in, look at targets and start thinking, is that a threat or a non-threat? If you shoot a non-threat, it's a failure. It's killing a person, okay. You have to take it that seriously. If you see a threat, meaning someone's pointing a weapon at you, you've gotta neutralize or take down that threat before they take you out. So it's gotta be quick, but it can't be so quick you're getting the hostage or the non-threat aside of it surgical shooting. If you didn't have required surgical shooting, they'd just send in an aircraft and blow the place to pieces. Guys are surgical shooters, CQB, close quarters battle, and there's nothing static about it because you're moving and shooting and communicating. So we set up the house so there's equal targets on two identical sides of the house. We've been doing dry practice and doing half the house. We practiced and trained at looking at the doorway, the number one man looking at the doorway, looking at the hinges, trying to figure out which way that door is going to open. They know now if they see the hinges, the door opens toward them. If they don't see the hinges, the door opens away from them. Because you don't want this noise outside the door. You want the element of surprise. They know what a stack is, a one person, two person, three person, four person stack. They know how to squeeze from the back to number three to number two to number one. The number one man gets the stack, he opens the door, and he flows through as quickly as he can, like water. They can use a flash crash, smoke, noise diversion, and then they have to know how to communicate with their teammates, either non-verbally or clear, concise, verbal commands, because it can get so chaotic in there. Sure. The shooting and Especially the noise. Especially flash bangs, and then if you have to actually discharge your weapons in a closed, confined space, it's, it's loud. Don't worry about the points on this. This isn't graded. This is training. This, don't even worry about points for this. Absolutely, you cannot cover anybody with your weapon. There's no reason that that's allowable, ever. slow just to make sure it was really safe because uh, we've never really done this before together and typically when it comes to CQB teams will rehearse this over and over and over and over and over again. Long delay, long delay. Down! Weapons in safe direction. Out of the door. Get out of the doorway. You say mo moving, he says move, now he's I following you. Now go. Nice and slow. It was neat being coordinated going through the shoot house. It was really cool. We were very friends exciting. so we didn't shoot each other. <laughs> we made sure we were safe and it was a good experience. Get out! Then 
and that run was really fun. Um, it definitely taught us communication, nonverbal commands, being safe with the firearm, as always. In all modesty, we did a good job, right? We got in, got the job done, cleared all the rooms out. Uh, it was great. No safety violations. No safety violations. <laughs> Trick's a good guy to follow because he's big. You know? uh, <laughs> so I get, I get to take all the bullets. And he's exhibiting a lot of patience. He's making nothing for granted. And he's conveying the message. And obviously safety is like paramount here with our competitors. So he's definitely covering his, his bases there. A couple times I've been through a shoot house just by myself. But um, this is definitely ups the ante with another person and another live gun. Get down, get down. Slow. I had a great partner. He's a really experienced combat shooter. Moving! Move! It was awesome. We were nervous at first, but we were a good team. Yeah, we were. You know, the instructors were playing with us, so it was safe. We just had nothing to worry about. Yeah, it was great. That was awesome. And then she had a casualty at the end. In the man's private. I'm just going to say it was on purpose. <laughs> There were a couple shots that shouldn't have been taken. There were two headshots to good people, and there were a couple other shots to good people which shouldn't have been taken. Uh, but this is an hour into it. We have fed them so much information, and they're coming out here and doing two-man live CQB. And I'd say an overall rating, I'd give them like an A. Yeah, absolutely. They did a great job, paid attention. Uh, got comfortable with it. The commands were clear and concise most of the time. And uh, yeah, I thought they did a great job. Welcome to the fire. I'm the one with the light up. And burn it through your veins. It's my welcome to the flames. Getting higher. Welcome to the fire. Smoke screens are an essential military tool. Smoke is a means of creating concealment from hostile fire. It can also be used as a signal to helos when a team needs extraction or calling for medvac. But shooting through smoke is not easy. And because smoke is a factor in the upcoming mission, we felt it was important that the team had some time to practice with it. It was not a timed or scored event. Line is set, ready, fire! to shoot a really nice rifle that is you know, way nicer than anything I have with a great optic. And then watching things blow up with flashbangs and smoke going off everywhere, that was pretty fun. I hit one of them Tannerite canisters out there. Did it the old school way. I didn't have a scope. I had the old uh, open sights. Feels pretty good being one of only two up there to hit that. I took the uh, iron sights and uh, lit one up. Woo! We have one more shooting evolution of the day. A very, very important and critical shooting evolution. We have Leaf here from Medieval, who you know, for the people who are gonna take this opportunity, rolling the dice and for getting more points. We have seven people eligible to take this critical shot coming up. It's the last one of the course, and it's big. I mean, you're rolling the dice, and there's a lot of points to be gained or lost. There's seven individuals here who have the opportunity to take this shot. They're gonna come up and they're gonna get a free shot. Doesn't count. They've got world-class instruction. Randy, if you were in that position, what would you do? Well, this is the last opportunity to score any points. This is the last chance that I would have to be in the number one spot. So I think if this was me, obviously the conditions aren't perfect. At least today, it's a 
headwind that's coming right in on us instead of the 25 mile an hour crosswind that we had the other day for the people that took the shot that day. And this being the last opportunity to take the driver's seat, to be the number one guy, to win the 10K, and to be a host in next year's show, I'm gonna take that risk. Now, am I potentially gonna lose some points? Yeah, with these conditions, maybe, but I'm gonna take it if I was in those shoes. Thanks, Randy. If I was in a position where you seven are, and I had the chance to gain these points, and I had your shooting skills, I would do the same thing, Randy. No balls, no blue chips. What we would like to do is have the seven of you walk up here, please. I'm just gonna come by. We're gonna talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, and we'd like to know if you're gonna take the opportunity to roll the dice and to gain or lose these points. I'm rolling the dice, Don. I figured you would. I'm glad to hear it. Good luck, man. Hope it works out oh, yeah. for you. Excellent. Glad to hear it. Hope it works out for you, Allie. Thanks. These are just not ideal conditions for a shot. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. It'd be a good shot for me on a perfect day, but I'll give it a go anyways. Good. Good. Take the chance. Glad to hear it. I'm doing it. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> No surprise? Oh, yep. I, I knew that. <laughs> Came to shoot. <laughs> yeah. One of you asked it. Excellent. Seven of seven are going to take the challenge. It's a gutsy people here. How many shots are you going to take? I'm taking all three. Excellent. Three. Excellent. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. I, uh, I guess. Excellent. Why not? Excellent. I guess. Excellent. I know it's peer pressure. <laughs> one shot. Okay. So you get your practice shot that doesn't count, then you're going to do one after that? Okay, not, not any more after that? Right. Okay. One shot for me, too. One shot. Okay. One shot, one shot. It was expensive. I'm picking three. <laughs> okay, good. You're paying the bill. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I feel like we're watching Jeopardy, you know? How much do you, how much do you bet on the bonus round? You bet too much and, and then you, you, you miss or you get the answer wrong, you, you lose points and then you end up taking yourself out of the driver's seat instead of gaining the points you need to be in the driver's seat. So there is some strategy. Obviously, a couple of the guys on the other end are doing just taking one shot, so they're only risking 50 points. But they're only gaining 50 if they hit that shot too. I think the more we saw the other day, the gentleman that took all three shots, he missed his first shot, but he was able to make the proper correction between the two shots that he took he hit two more and he still gained 50 points. So, um, you know, again, you're, you're playing a balancing act. This is the last opportunity to get any points. So certainly any of you that are sitting behind the guy that's in number one right now, you might as well take the shot. Uh, that's how I see it. Um, but I get it, strategy, strategy. You've got Leaf here to answer any questions you may have. It's gonna be one shooter at a time coming up. You do get that one shot that doesn't count. He'll be briefing you on everything beyond that point. And you have Bill here who'll be on the scope spotting for you. We've got a spotting scope. We should be able to walk that in with that one shot, hopefully. I think the headwind is gonna help a little bit. It's not gonna, it's not the crosswind we had the other day, but it's still not ideal, but it's doable. So as we're coaching you on this course of fire, we're gonna utilize the clock method, right? Yeah. So 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Everyone understand that? Once the round indicator hits, my spotter is going to call out where it's, where it's hitting and give you what adjustments you need to make. Any questions? Yeah, it's so, zeroed in right now. It's 700 yards. We've done nothing to the scope other than adjust elevation. The wind is 100% on you guys. You can tell by these values it's going to be crazy downrange. So once he starts calling it out, you really got to start paying attention to where what he's telling you. Because it could be night and day. Yeah, night and day, every shot. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> Wait, what if we hit our first shot? The first one's around. a test, so just practice repeat it. You know right where you held and, and right where it was. I'm giving you the first one so you can get an idea what the hell this wind is doing down there. Blowing hard, that's what. Yeah, thankfully right at us. It's gonna be fun, you guys are gonna do Makes fine, I promise. Nice. <laughs> Might help, who knows? But we have verified the distance, and we have verified the shot, so it can be done. No ready to shoot? Let's do it. Left to right, Game on. All right.
Eyes and ears, everybody, going hot. Four rounds in. Going up. Send it. Spotter sees four o'clock low, four feet. Four o'clock low, four feet. Going up. Send it. Send it. Ooh. Hi, 11 o'clock. The wind values are nuts. Right. Grabbed. Hi, 11 o'clock, one foot. Hi, 11 o'clock, one foot. This third? That's it. You got it. Start right here at this front target. All the, the tire tracks, all the way out past the berm. Don't like the weather? Hold your breath. It'll change in a minute. Y'all good? We're this over. No. <laughs> you got this. You can do it. Spotter ready? Spotter ready. Send him ready. Wrong target. Gosh. Two target, and then the third target all the way up. Okay. The third target is in the Safety's off. There you go. Nice. Five o'clock, 12 feet. So you're low, 12 feet. She's way low. Four o'clock, six feet low. Four o'clock, six feet low. You got this, you can do it. Now take your time, there's no rush. Remember your fundamentals, breathe. Three o'clock, six feet. Your hand. Honestly, that was the coolest thing I've ever done. I came here to get better at shooting, to push myself, you know, out of my comfort zone. And for me, this is the coolest thing. I'm competing against some of really amazing shooters. So it was worth it. It was awesome. Two feet. Did you hear that? Yep. Oh. Five o'clock. Low. One foot.
One o'clock high. One foot. Just a bad shot. I'm more upset about taking a bad shot than I am. Oh yeah, yeah. Those Especially. are not the conditions to take shots in. Especially facing the sun. I mean, kind of... how long have you been a sniper? It was only '93 to '97, so a long time ago. Perishable yeah. skills. You still got the talent. I know the military snipers who didn't make a shot because it's bad conditions. It hurts them here because they go. I wouldn't have taken a shot if it was a real shot, but because that wasn't a real shot other than what we're doing here with this program, um, you know, they chose to take it. I really respect that attitude in them because as a military sniper with that hardcore discipline and everything, they know to take the shot if it's gonna work. And uh, they might work the way for days around to get the sun behind them so they're not shooting into the sun. They might wait to the conditions, but sometimes that's not possible. Sometimes you just gotta put it on the table, I'm gonna take the shot, and that's what happened today. I admire your courage, I know what you might be going through, but um, I admire your courage and your skill sets and how well you've been doing. It hurts that I saw what happened. You know how bad it is for someone like us to get a miss? Yeah, yeah. But you know in your heart you wouldn't have taken it anyways. Right, two o'clock, one foot. Low, seven o'clock, four feet. Kind of disappointed that I missed the last two, but I mean, Hitting one is better than hitting none, so happy with that for, that's by far the farthest I've ever tried to shoot and never shot in the wind like that at distance, so pretty happy with it. Tied right now, so see what the other guys do, see how it shakes out. Gonna be close though. Seven o'clock. Five o'clock, low, two feet. You know, I only bet 50 points. I'm not super worried about it, um, so I think that I'm comfortable enough in third above fourth and everybody else to at least stay there, so uh, hopefully the guy in first misses and I can take the spot, but if not, I'm done. Right, four o'clock. Four feet. Got it. Two o'clock. One foot. I mean, no. Right, man. 
I should have adjusted for windage more uh, to the left. I misjudged that and missed. It seemed accurate enough. It's just really windy right now and missed the shot. It uh, dropped me down 50 points, but I only chose one shot because I didn't want to do that three times in a row. Chris chose three shots, so hopefully he doesn't hit three times. Nine o'clock, one foot. Six feet. Shot. You took a headshot on your last one. That was outstanding. Congratulations. 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 Good job to all your shooters. Great work. Well, I think I'm in the same position. There's been ups and there's been downs, and it's been a great experience. So it's pretty hard to complain. We all broke even. We were thankful for the great insights that Randy Couture shared with us during the competition, both as a physical fitness guru and a seasoned military vet. So we decided to give Randy a token of our appreciation, surviving man style. A lot of little buckets out there. That was a big boom. <laughs> yeah, I was about a five gallon bucket full of uh, diesel and uh, about two pounds of tannerite. You're definitely gonna feel that. The recoil's not too bad on that man. You gotta get the right distance from that scope so you can get a good sight picture and then, you know, figure it out how to move around to find that the, what you're actually trying to shoot at. It's always the challenge, but turn the scope out so I had a bigger field of view and that helped me find the target. So it, it must be really hard having to do this. Like you really- Oh yeah, it's such a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many moving parts to this whole thing. There's the points you're trying to go after. There's helping each other out that you're all doing such a great job at. There's a peer pressure, and there's a TV show, and I just want to thank you for all your patience today and the whole week. Thanks. Bob also has something he wants to say. So uh, I appreciate all seven of you coming in and shooting, because what I wanted to show is that every one of you guys, all 32 of you, were just courageous, fearless. I wanted people who come here on their own dime on their own honor to, to, to do this. And by the way, for the record, the four top guys all of them had 50 point drops, so who cares anyway, right? But what they did is they did something that I learned from Don. Don has an amazing speech about 
going beyond boundaries, Be going beyond the comfort zone. The comfort zone would have been to sit back and see if other people fail. That'd been comfortable. How would it have felt if you took the safe route? But I, I'm gonna say one thing, you'd have walked away regretting 100%, 100%, I've been around a little while. And when I didn't step up, I regret it. And Don taught me that. Not one of you quit. None of you quit. You just gotta take a win to, to even be standing here. Ooh, yeah. There you go. Woo! You know, we put some pressure on them. I mean, I'm really, really proud of all seven of them just stepping up here, getting to the point where they're offered the position to take that shot and then taking it. I agree completely with what Bob just said. If you walked away without taking that shot, you're gonna think, what the heck? What could have happened if I had taken it? So I really admire all seven who took that shot and who just went out there, especially in these conditions, and they tried. And they didn't worry about the points. They were worrying about doing the best and stepping up to the plate and trying to take a shot where they may have gotten more points, but the chances were against them. And I thought that was very courageous on all of their parts. Coming up next time, the exciting season finale of Surviving Man. Stay tuned.